Welcome to July's Legal Challenge. Today's problem is add digits. Given a non-negative integer, repeatedly add all its digits until the result has only one digit. Say we're given the number 38. We're going to add these two digits together, 3 plus 8, and we'll get 11. But that's still two digits, so we'll add those two together, 1 plus 1. Now we get 2, and that's only 1, so we'll return it. Now, the follow-up is to do this in O of 1 time. Uh, but let's start with the naive approach, so-called. They say the naive implementation is trivial, but <clears throat> I disagree. I still think it's good to go over it. So to do that, um, let's start with thinking of what our while loop would be. It would be while our number is greater than 9, meaning there's two digits, we're going to add iteratively all the digits together and check to see if this num is, is well, greater than 9, right? So let's initialize a temporary number, start with 0. And while this number exists, we can just add to our temporary variable um, the num modular 10. So that's going to give us the last digit, right? And we add to that, and now we'll decrease our num by dividing it by 10. So we'll now go through the entire number, adding each digit up. And now our temporary number is going to be uh, what it results in. And now we'll just make that equal to num. And this should break the loop as long as it's uh, less, than, uh, less than 10 or not greater than 9. And then we can just return the num, whatever it is. So this is supposedly the naive approach, um, but it does get accepted because it's still logarithmic time. It's um, still pretty good for, for what we're trying to do, but we want to do better. We want to see if we can do this in O of one time. Now the hints they give you are pretty obscure, and they give me this Wikipedia article pointing to um, an article about the digital root. But unfortunately, the math behind that's a little bit tricky, and I didn't think it'd be worth it to go over that for this video. I might do that in a separate one later. Uh, so what's one way that we could see if we can solve this? Like, how about we just first um, write this function out, and what I'm gonna do is try to run this in the terminal and see if I can discover any sort of pattern going on here. So what I'll do is take this code, we'll just go to our terminal, and let's, what did I do here? Um, I think I messed up my, my indent. So while num, mm -hmm. so that should work. Okay, great. So now we have our function inside and we'll do a for i in range of zero to 101. And that's going to give us an idea of up to one digit to two and three. And we can just print the number as well as the result from our function and just try to see if there's any sort of pattern because immediately you'll see there definitely is. It just iterates down the number um, one through nine with the exception of zero. It goes from one to nine and then starts over one to nine, one to nine. And it seems to do that forever. Um, even when it gets to 100, it just repeats itself. All right, so that gives us some insight into what our mathematical function could be. Uh, seeing that it's going to equal 9 whenever it's a multiple of 9, that's kind of an exception, uh, but everything else is going to be the modular of 9. We can use the modular operator to kind of mimic this pattern uh, with the exception of when it's a multiple of nine that's going to equal zero if we use a modular uh, we could just say hey if it's a multiple of nine then return a nine because that seems to be what's happening now the math behind that's a, a little bit tricky to explain so let's just say we don't really understand what's going on here all we do is know that there's some sort of pattern so we know that if num equals zero we should return zero else if num is a multiple of nine we can do that by getting the modular and we return 9. Otherwise, just return the modular, uh, num modular of 9. So let's see if this works. 
and that also works. And this would be O of one time complexity. Now I admit um, this wasn't something that I immediately saw, I came up with. I had to see the, see the solution to come up with this, but I just thought uh, if you did see the output, we're able to print everything out, you could discover like what's going on here and write a function for it pretty quickly. So I think I'm gonna separate the video with the, for the math behind it, because in a lot of ways that's not really related to the programming aspect of it. I hope at least the intu this video helps with the intuition. Thanks for watching my video and remember, do not trust me, I know nothing. <laughs>